would remain standing as we read responsibly the call to worship. From our forced arrival to the new world, to the current far-reaching ideas of a post-racial society, black lives, whether the liminal space of questionable existence and certain death, black bodies remain contested terrain upon which racism, sexism, classism, heterosexism, homophobia, capitalism, and militarism wreak debilitating havoc. Countless black leaders worked tirelessly speaking truth to power to the very systems that work to dehumanize black lives and disavow the black experience. With hundreds upon their backs, they have waded through the biblical test textual waters filled with skewed hermeneutical approaches and hegemonic homiletical processes to set the captives free. Like Harriet Tubman, they've liberated thousands and could liberate more if only folk would resist participating in their own oppression. In spite of weary throats that accompany truth to power speakers, they have toiled to redistribute power to oppressed peoples with a burning desire for liberation. We behold their witness and honor their sacrifice. We live in a society where black children are not viewed as children, but as threatening brutes and sassy Jezebels. We live in a culture where walking to the store with a hooded sweatshirt, listening to loud music in your car, switching lanes without signaling, selling untaxed cigarettes, playing in the park, being a stranded motorist, refusing to turn over your cell phone to your teacher, or attending Wednesday night Bible study are all actions that can get you arrested or worse, get you killed. The soil upon which we stand is saturated with the salty tears of our community's best in gathering. The fruit of our wounds have prematurely and too frequently become our ancestors. The terror that accompanies not being able to treble the weighted grips of overexposure and invisibility restricts our breath and exacerbates traumas too deep to fully name. <laughs> Entire communities are dangling from 21st century poplar, poplar trees. Blood on the leaves and blood at the root. Roots denigrated by the sadistic wiles of empire. We are exhausted from fighting in prone position. Exhausted from trying to revive sacred texts to validate our worth. Exhausted from wrestling with external and internal pressures of being black in America and abroad. We build on the momentum of our foreparents because their witness of strategic survival gives us the capacity to embrace our indigenous reality while existing in another.
their names. We speak their names. For our children and our children's children, we vow to make it plain in word and deed that black lives matter. We refute the notion that our black bodies are a menace to society. We affirm the sacred worth of our embodiment and acknowledge that black flesh has always been a conduit of the divine. We honor the creator by honoring its creation. We are the descendants of Imhotep, Nzinga, and Ya Asantewa. We are the sons and daughters of Obatala, Yemanya, Oshu, Shango, and Ogun. We are believers in and followers of the liberated one, Yeheshua. We are comrades of Asata, Mtulu, and Angela, of Malcolm, Martin, and Chisholm. We are the seeds planted by Ella, Fannie Lou, and Prathia the harvest of Teresa Lynn and Randall B. We are contemporaries to Bree Newsom, Tracy Blackman, and Greg Ellison. We are our grandmother's prayers. We are our grandfather's dreams. We are the breath of the ancestors. We are the spirit of God. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win souls and save lives. We must love each other and protect each other. We have nothing to lose but our shame. At this time, we invite you to greet your dear ones near you and pass the peace. Peace. Peace be with you.
We are thankful for the presence of the Holy Spirit, which is already leading and guiding this service. I invite you to look at the back of your program, in which you will see a bio of this morning's preacher, Kaya Jennings, who is a graduate of Samuel Witt Proctor School of Theology and a current Master of Second Theology student. In addition, you will see other events that are going around the community this week and next week. Feel welcome in this place on this morning. If you feel the need to clap your hands, clap your hands. If you feel the need to stand up, stand up. If you feel the need to shout and say amen, shout and say amen. For your praise and worship is welcome in this place. I greet you once, I greet you twice, I greet you again in the name of Jesus Christ. This morning's epistle reading comes from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 32 through 34. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel, and the prophets, who, through faith, conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging, raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, and put foreign armies to flight. May we hear the wisdom in these words. she worked 
My grandmother, alongside her fellow co-workers, prostrated themselves across those tracks in protest of the segregationist wages that the company paid them, which were significantly lower than the laborers and employees. One union worker at the time said this, and I quote, we are not striking just for higher wages. We are fighting segregationist policies. Being intimidated by law enforcement officers carrying billy clubs, spewing threats of arrest while holding leashes to barking police dogs, she continued to lay right there. Where an incoming locomotive could approach at any time, instantly robbing her of her life because she knew that what she was fighting for was bigger than her. She did it so that the five small children that she had at home could one day have the opportunity to live in the light of dignity. She did it so that her grandchildren would not have to drop out of middle school to work, but could go on to become not only high school, but college graduates. She did it so that the nation in which she lived would no longer have a monochromatic view of society, but would see the beauty that exists in all of the skin tones of God's children. She stayed in the fight because she had enough faith to know that with everything she was enduring, with all of the hardships she faced, she knew that it was indeed worth the sacrifice. Stories like my grandmother still reverberate through the households and homesteads and millions of families across America. Stories about how our ancestors overcame injustice and tackled issues of inequality with the hope that their action would one day make a difference in a culture that would not only preach freedom but produce freedom. Amen. Stories about how persons were willing to sacrifice everything that they had in order to be a positive influence on all of humankind. Even our scripture text from Hebrews 11 shows us today about how our biblical predecessors like David and Gideon, Esther and Deborah, all stayed in the fight regardless of how the outside world viewed them, despite the consequences or how they felt, they stayed in there because they had faith to know that the sacrifices they would make would produce justice, provide freedom, and would allow them to be in a position to receive all that God had promised them. Amen. Even during this Lenten season, let us remember Jesus while in the wilderness for 40 days preparing to begin his earthly ministry. Even with the lack of food and rest, Jesus had enough faith to know that the time that he spent there in the desert being tempted by the enemy would be indeed worth the sacrifice. My brothers and my sisters, where there is no sacrifice, there is no success. Nothing in this world comes easy, and to ensure that the next generation will have a place and a space to be all that God needs them to be, we must sacrifice and endure the wilderness like Jesus. We must face giants like David. We must be fearless in times of battle like Deborah. We must continue to pray tirelessly and fervently, even if people think we are a little strange like Hannah. Because, my dear friends, what we sacrifice today will produce the fruits of our tomorrow. Yes, we are in Lent, as some of us have given up sodas, cookies. This time, this is the time for the Baptist Church, but we will say amen. Cookies, cake, candy. We have put aside Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter. But I stand before you today to ask you, what else are you willing to sacrifice? Are you willing to put aside selfishness and greed? Are you willing to let go of mind frames and mentalities that allow you to hold contempt against your brother or your sister? Are you willing to forego your comfort and step outside of the box to help pave the way for all persons in this time of struggle? Are you willing just to smile at someone? When they seem a little stressed, are you willing to just give them an encouraging word when they are a little depressed? Beloved, are you willing to do what God has called you to do? I just came by my shop today to tell someone to remember persons like my grandmother, whose narratives ring throughout this nation. Remember the prophet. The prophets whose stories are housed 
in our holy text, but most of all, remember Jesus and stay in the fight. Because the sacrifices you are making will be worth it in the end. You may be asking, well, Kaya, how can I, how, how can I stay in the fight? I'm only one person. What real difference can I have on the world? I'm too young. I'm too old. My life is not that significant. How can my life make an impact? And I'm not sure who this may be, but I just want to encourage and reassure you with the words from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, that says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power and a love and of a sound mind. You have the power to move mountains, the power to tread through valleys. You have the power to tear down strongholds. You have the power to change the world if you just keep trying and stay in the fight. Because I heard someone <coughs> tell me before that a steady drip of water can wear a hole in a rock. And that's why, my sister, you must stay in the fight for justice. Have faith in knowing that you are preparing a place where every day your children and my children will have the opportunity to sit at the same table in communion with one another and partake in the meal of unity and unconditional love. Stay in the fight for peace, my brother. Have faith in knowing that you are preparing an atmosphere that will no longer be tainted by systemic violence, oppression, or discrimination, but one that will, be, will forever maintain the atmospheric pressure that will be conducive for kindness, gentleness, and self-control. Stay in the fight of the faith and let the world know that the gift of God's grace is an ever-flowing healing stream that allows sins to be forgiven and relationships to be restored. Even as you stay in the fight of academia, warring against sleep, this is another amen moment, warring against sleep, test, five hour energy drink, critical review, have faith, and know that this brief moment of stress is preparing you for your earthly ministry. It is preparing you to preach the goodness that is the gospel. It is preparing you to provide care to God's people. Preparing you to speak truth to power. Preparing you to be the beacon of light that pierces through the darkness of evil to radiate warm beams of hope upon the hopeless. Beloved, you can't give up now because there's still too much work that we have to do. Our families are deteriorating, our children are dying, our water supplies are becoming poisonous, our planet is overheating, our sisters and our brothers and our mothers and our fathers are still being lost to the incarceration system. And these things let us know that there is still work that we must do. So I try to date my dear friends as I go back to my seat. Thank y'all. It's been a pleasure. I'm only here for one year. I'll be out your way in a little bit. <laughs> but our charge today, my dear friends, is to stay in the fight so that one day we can take heart in knowing that with everything that we have done, with all of the battle wounds that we wear, and with all of the scars that we bear, that we can look back and know that it was indeed worth the sacrifice. Stay in the fight, my sister. Stay in the fight, my brother. Until the day we can join hand in hand and say that we all have overcome. Amen. Amen.
Later that night, I held an atlas in my lap, ran my fingers across the whole world, and whispered, Hurt is it hurt? It answered, Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. The prayer of the people. Spirit of abundance, God of grace, bearer of hope, we pause now to remember those stories that are all around us, but so often passed over. Those stories that when told are shared because of what someone is, not who they are. This month in our nation's character is Black History Month. Help us to realize that Black history is all of our histories. May the day come when these stories are so wildly taught that no month need be separately divided. We know this day will not come until we as a people make different choices. We pray now for those new choices. May we come to see a day where the prison system becomes redemptive, not punitive. A day where the legal system learns to focus more squarely on the facts and not the colors of our skin. A day where our schools are as well funded as the needs demand. May our role models be allowed to excel when they thrive and not be taken down for their rich heritage. We know this will require a shift in power, and this can be scary for some. Give those full of fear hope. May we come to know grace so that our hearts will not be hardened to the pain around us. There are so many beautiful stories needing to be told, and we need to get the chance to hear them. Widen our vision so that the history that is shared this month and every month can come to be known as our history too. We are most human when we see the humanity in others. In your presence, be with our loved ones, our mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, friends, those who are suffering, those who are sorrowful. Give them peace. <clears throat> Remind them of their love. Remind them that the crucifixion is not the last word, and that we affirm the resurrection. Amen. Amen.